Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Poetry Competition Singapore. My name is Carissa Pudra Harjo. I am a writer and literary organizer, and I will be the MC for today. We're so excited to see all of you here today for this incredible event where our fellow brothers and sisters will be sharing their work. The Migrant Poetry Competition was first held in 2014 and has quickly established itself as one of the key events in the cultural calendar in Singapore. The objective of the competition is to provide a platform for mutual understanding between Singaporeans and migrant workers while celebrating the literary talent of migrant workers in Singapore. The competition is organized by a group of volunteers who are migrants and Singaporeans under the Global Migrant Festival. It's really unfortunate to not be able to have this event on a physical stage, but I'm really proud that we were able to adapt and continue to provide a platform for migrant workers. I would like to give a huge shout out to thank all of the amazing participants who submitted their entries. We received over 140 entries, and I'm incredibly heartened to see the support that we have received, and we're proud to be able to share your stories and your voice on this global stage. I'm also super excited for you to listen to the poetry readings of the 23 finalists. So please stay tuned till the end of the program and don't forget to share and spread the word about us. We would also like to say a huge thank you to our supporting partners, the Embassy of the United States of America in Singapore, the High Commission of Canada in Singapore, Think Raw and The Good Shop Malaysia. Let's now hear from Rafiq Mansour, Chargé d'Affaires at the Embassy of the United States of America in Singapore. Greetings from the U.S. Embassy in Singapore. It's my pleasure to address all of you on this exciting occasion. Here at the Embassy, we are proud to be a part of the Migrant Worker Poetry Competition, an event we have supported for many years. This important and inspiring annual competition creates a platform for sharing diverse perspectives on life's trials and triumphs. It reminds us that every voice deserves to be heard and that coexisting peacefully requires understanding and valuing diverse viewpoints. This competition has a powerful effect on everyone involved. Audiences are left with newfound understanding and empathy for migrant workers and respect for their courage and resilience. For the poets, this competition allows them to step outside the responsibilities of their daily lives and express the part of who they are, talented artists. In some cases, it opens up opportunities for the future. Previous contestants have gone on to showcase their work in Singapore's literary scene, collaborating with fellow artists at events such as the Singapore Writers' Festival. Some have published their poems, both locally and internationally. I know continued lockdowns have made the last two years especially difficult, and I commend you poets for sharing your voices and experiences with all of us. American poet Amanda Gorman spoke the following words at US President Biden's inauguration earlier this year. We are striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. Indeed, these are shared ideals for Singaporeans and Americans alike and the partnership between our countries is crucial to the continued promotion of diverse points of view. With that, I know we're all looking forward to hearing the poems. Enjoy the final presentations. Thank you very much to the Honorable Chargé d'Affaires at Embassy of the United States of America in Singapore. Let's now hear from Mr. Jean-Dominique Girati, the High Commissioner of Canada to Singapore. Bonjour, hello. I'm Jean-Dominique Hirachi, High Commissioner of Canada to Singapore. It is a great honor to be given the opportunity to address you at the finals of the 2021 Migrant Worker Poetry Competition. Canada is proud to support the competition for the third year in a row. I'd like to first congratulate the organizing team as well as the translators and production crew for providing migrant workers in Singapore an important platform for creative expression through poetry. I understand that you have volunteered many hours of your personal time to put this together. A huge kudos to all of you. 
While we all would have preferred to have the finals in person, I am delighted that it can still go ahead digitally amidst this pandemic. I know that the migrant worker community has faced unprecedented physical and mental health challenges as a result of COVID-19 and its pandemic-related restrictions, suffering more than the rest of us. Against this backdrop, the Migrant Worker Poetry Competition continues to hold a particularly important significance this year. Today, we will once again learn through you that poetry can be healing. It gives a voice to those who are underrepresented, a platform not only for creative expression, but also to communicate to audiences the experiences, the hardship, and the messages of hope, solidarity, and community. This event is particularly meaningful to us as Canadians. Like Singapore, we too are an immigrant country. In fact, one in every five Canadians was born outside Canada, including my father. We accept that we are not perfect, and our model of multiculturalism is by no means a finished project. But we are deeply committed to celebrating our diversity and fostering a culture of inclusion at home and globally. Including by celebrating the immensely important social, cultural, economic and civic contributions that migrant communities make to our societies. We applaud your strength, your courage and your resilience, and I hope an event such as this would inspire all of us to commit to fostering continued respect for our migrant worker communities. In closing, I would like to extend my heartiest of congratulations to all participants who entered this year's competition for sharing with us your diverse perspectives, experiences and talents through poetry. On behalf of the High Commission of Canada, thank you for giving us a platform to support such a unique and meaningful event. And should you be keen on keeping up to date on what we're up to in Singapore, please feel free to follow us on social media. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Honorable High Commissioner of Canada to Singapore. I'd now like to introduce to you a very important group of people our judges. These individuals have had the difficult job of selecting 23 finalists from 143 submissions. Thank you to Shane Carrion, Denver Ejim Torres, Rebecca Hak, Liu Xiaoyi, and Liu Xiu Tiep. As a quick recap, the top prize winner will receive 1,000 Singapore dollars, second place will receive $500, and third place will receive $300. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the next set of judges who will determine the winners of this year's competition from the 23 finalists. First up, we have Dr. Alvin Pang. He is a Singaporean poet, writer, editor, and translator whose writing has been translated into more than 20 languages worldwide. Awarded the Young Artist of the Year for Literature in 2005 and the Singapore Youth Award in 2007, he was appointed to the honorary position of pro adjunct professor of RMIT University in 2021. Next, we have Nabila Said, a playwright, editor, and poet. Her plays have been presented in Singapore and London, including Angkat 2019, which won Best Original Script at the 2020 Life Theatre Awards. She is the founder of the playwright collective Mind Tulis Group, and she's the editor of Southeast Asian art publication, Arts Equator. Our third and final judge is Liu Xiaoyi, artistic director of Emergency Stairs. A committed practitioner with a desire to push artistic boundaries, he is regarded as a promising figure at the forefront of the experimental theater scene in Asia. Xiaoyi received the Young Artist Award by the National Arts Council of Singapore in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to introduce to you the 23 finalists of the 2021 Migrant Worker Poetry Competition, Singapore. Let's kick it off with Mary Joyce Infante Giga. Mary Joyce Infante Giga has been working in Singapore as a helper for three years. During her free time, she composes original quotes on her Facebook account titled, Playing With Words. Inspired by the turtle's toughness, independence and silent struggles, she wrote the poem Turtle to symbolize her life. She tries to continuously improve herself by reading self-help books, 
and participating in an art group, Arts in Me. Good day, I am Mary J. Skiga, and my poem is titled Turtle. You creep out of your shell, all alone, not ready to face the danger. Racing to the ocean in despair, but when you reach there, does it all gonna end well? Countless of time that you wish you can soar the sky, but you were not nestled and given wings to fly. And no one will catch you from falling from your first try. You were not born to soar. You were honed to explore. Though adversity is at bay, just follow the light and you will be okay. Success is not how high you've reached the sky. Didn't you know what your kind have achieved? Been here since ancient time. Witness the extinction and have a mark on the timeline. Lim Iwei is 27 years old from Malaysia. Iwei has worked in Singapore for the last five years and now works as a QC. Through the company, Iwei got to know many friends of other nationalities and learns about their countries while sharing about their own. Iwei's poem was written in dedication to the hardworking migrants. 乡情思意连玉微转一转线连天只愿拼搏往上扬心里这一头牵引着另一段的心飞再高仍望不到故里的云清风缓行云散断线落渊无力撞落荒凉草甸嗅得绿香四溢野草向着小镇炊烟袅袅宛若对我殷切呼唤听着潺潺流水声另一种熟悉乡音多年以来早被异乡钢筋铁瓦吞噬夜让心随梦游思绪继续蔓延那渐渐清晰影子不凄然拥我入怀吻上我呢清瘦困倦脸颊你仿如已经忘了多年前让你唠叨无数依然任性独身去追逐远方和诗再回首遥望斑驳的四行泪痕我还是那位让你心累女儿家眷恋那永不褪色图腾是我一生最美的风景 Eli Nur Fadila was born in Jilatap, Central Java, Indonesia. She has been working in Singapore since 2011 as a domestic worker. A proud mother of one, she believes that words are very powerful and through writing, we can create more understanding to make the world worth living. The Dandelion Song When the sun rises tomorrow, we will sing a dandelion song along with hummingbirds and butterflies. As the fresh morning dews gently touch our face, wishes are made and dreams ring high. With mother prayers as our guard, there will be no more loneliness bullet to shooting our hearts. And the faith that wrap around our wrists will create more joy that feel like lovers first kiss. And tomorrow, when the sun rises again, I'll put my hand in yours and you'll put your hand in mine. Together we will dance along the dandelion song. We'll celebrate our existence and strengthen our bond. Even if today we're not in our best, tomorrow again 
together we'll rise. Thank you. Christiana Handayani comes from Central Java, Indonesia. Christiana likes watching YouTube and dramas and can learn anything from it. She started loving poetry when she was in secondary school. She learns how to read it in the right tone in order to understand its soul. And that is why she loves it. Metamorfosa. Ia yang hancur karena hinaan. Yang terluka karena pengkhianatan. Yang terbuang karena kebencian. Yang terlupakan karena kekuasaan. Angin berhembus kencang. Ombak menabrak karang. Badai pun datang. Memecah suasana yang hening dan tenang. Para pencemooh menertawakannya. Mereka bangga atas kesombongannya. Bagi mereka kekuasaan adalah segalanya. Dan semua yang rendah adalah hina baginya. Realita hidup menyadarkannya. Ia bangun dari mimpi buruknya. Mencoba melangkah demi masa depannya untuk meraih cita-citanya. Ia yang dulu polos dan sederhana, kini bermetamorfosa menjadi kupu-kupu yang cantik jelita, terbang dan menari di antara bunga-bunga, dan membuat iri para lebah di sekitarnya. Oliveti Emilado was born in Zambales and is a single mother of five. She is currently working as a domestic helper in Singapore, and she was a finalist in the Migrant Poetry Writing Contest in 2017 and 2019. She has contributed poems to various books and ebooks in the Philippines, Hong Kong, and Singapore. I never told anyone. I never told anyone about you. In fact, I did not plan to share anything. I never told them how easily you get upset, even at the smallest things and issues. I never told them how fragile you are, that I always have to choose the words I say. I never told them how insensitive you are when it comes to understanding my feelings. I never told them how jerk you are most of the time, that you only thought of yourself, boasting with what you have, with this and that. I never told them that you only demand things in favor of you and care less for me. I never told them how cold you treated me when I made you disappointed for not giving in with what you want. I never told them how I was entirely when we had this so-called relationship. I never told them anything about us and how it ended. I never told them that your love was not even close to being true. That you only speak words of endearment when you want something from me. I never told them that you want me or need me as I am, just beneficial for your inhuman greed. Don't worry, I never told them who you really are. In fact, I have no regrets not telling them. In that way, they will never know how I was taken for granted, and that they will never know how I lost myself while trying to fix you. Durga Balan has been working in Singapore for the last 13 years. He was born in the village of Muvalur in Tamil Nadu, India. He is married and has two children and currently works as a safety officer. He started reading at the age of 10 and fell in love with the Tamil language. 
That is why he submitted a poem for his first poetry contest. Ariya Parvatil, Padiatra Gramatin Manvidil, Thirumin Vilakin, Mulikitin, Uru Sir Velicham Kandil Pada Kalvi Katravan, Padin Mavaidin, Situn Bevelatil Tapita Talitu, Tanda in Sumai Korekel, Mana Mary even. I the Masegil Nangel Suman the Alitherm in the Bumi, Kala de Vaitavan, Inbamun Tunbam Kalanda Valvil. Tanime in Vedre, Sumanda Natkril, Nakpin Mulam Pala, Uravinate on the Bumid Vasandangalin Vasam, Malarai, Maramai Pul Viliai Prabajatin over Anavilum containing Gay Muligal Palavan Alum, Vasa Montre, Vondranavana Thea de Samid Minmini Puchi in Velichetil Valdavan, Anea Velichetin Ulil, Irunda Valvillam, Ulir Hiradu Pur Vigatil. Akal in Thurmanate, Kaipesi, Neralil, Kankanangi, Kandabulidu, Nanbani Naravanai Pil, Aldu Urangi, Nadkalai Kadadavan, Kadalin, Asayelam Talivetu, Taramakum Nadkalaka Katirkum Kalvana, Kalavim, Kamamum, Karpanella, Yel by Kadan the Seller, Penne Virevil Vervin, Mun Karantada, Ramanakum Urvanava Samundu, Pandavurgulkum Urvanava Samundu, in the Corona, Engelakilam Urvanava Sami. Vanavasa Terkepin Arene, Ariana Yervadu, Dani Idia Sam Korum Nidersanam Nantri, Manakam Arun, who writes with a pseudonym, was born into a Bengali lower middle class family in the then state of Bihar in India, which now belongs to the state of Jharkhand. Writing poetry is not his job, it is his addiction. Namaskar. Kovita Parabash Kolome Aminiji Shab Kichu Hule, Peter Dae, Charlam Jobeghar Jantrona Buke, Akre Mora, Hoigechi Jajabor Bachbar Tore, Rinedjere, Bikaeche Thalabati Kudhar to Pete, Charlam Tai গরিবের ভিটে মাটি সেদিন থেকে বহুদিন গেছে একা কি কাটছে দিন অক্ষম কাঁধে বেড়েই চলেছে মাতৃভূমির ঋণ সুখের বদলে সুখ দিয়ে খুঁজি সুখের বাসস্থান তবু টাকার চাপে ব্যর্থ হয়েছে জীবনের সন্ধান মায়ের আচল বাবার স্নেহ आलोक बर्ष दुरे, भीटे माटी छेरे, बद्ध होये, होये गेची भव घुरे, कोई शर्थ के जोबन गेचे, रुटिरी संधाने, शेई सब स्रिती जोडिये राकी, पद्ध किम बगाने, आका कि तेर भील ठेले मन, संगी खुँजते चाई, मानुष होये जोन मेची बोले, मानुषे खिदेर जलाई जलिशी को भू निश्चसे प्रश्चसे टाका रागुने जलची आज भया बह परवशे एक दिन तो भू फिर बोई देशे जन्मो भूमिर कोले हारा बोई जनो देशेर माटीर खुदार तो कोला हले परवश जनो विशेर जला हुक ना सुनाई गोड़ा आमार देशे राकाश बताश भालो बशाई मोड़ा Namaskar. Dhanabad. Muhammad Aminul Islam was born in 1991 in Bangladesh and works in an air conditioning contractor company in Singapore. Name of poem. The imagination of expatriate. Crying, hiding, with oh, smiling. Fact, I love my family. Come to visit my own home because I am expatriate. Eat or not eat. Send money home. I wear the old clothes myself. I live in invisible. As if I can put a smile on everyone's face because I am expatriate. I am the machine of money, sweating water dry in body, feel for everyone hope of mine. I have to stay abroad, so I am expatriate. I float alone 
in the water of loneliness. Sometimes the food is spoiled because I am expatriate. How to pass my moment? Everyone is happy without me. I am busy, financing that joy. Sometimes I am happy in my imagination because I am expatriate. Cherry May Bermudo is from the Philippines. She loves to read books, but prefers writing poems and short stories. She's often not confident about what she writes, so she keeps them for her own reading. Aside from that, she loves to sing Christian songs. Ngiti para sa pagbabago, ako ay nananalangin, pikit matang dumadain, na sana'y dinggin ng Panginoong maawain. Dasal ko ay hindi para sa akin, kundi sa mga taong dapat sagipin. Puso ko ay nagsusumamo sa kaguluhang nangyayari, na sana ay matigil kalabang ayaw papigil. O Diyos ko, ikaw na ba ay naniningil? Mga ngiti sa labi, napalitan ng pighati, iba-ibang lahi ay nagdadalamhati. Bawat nasyon ay may labi, mga buhay ay nabigti, dulot ng pandemyang walang paki. Iisa ang dalangin na sana ay magwakas ang kahapong nagdaan, upang bukas ay maging bakas na lamang ng panginibagong mundo. Na may dalang titulo na tayo ay nagwagi laban sa pandemyang nakakagulantang. Marami ang nasawi, pilit bumabawi. Mundo'y maghihilom sa sugat ng kahapon. Puso ay may baon, pag-asa ang aahon. Bawat isa ay may kahon, laman ng alaalang nagdaan ng kahapon, patungo sa panibagong panahon. Umaasa na sa pagsikat ng araw, liwanag nito ay may dalang ngiti para sa pagbabago. Eliz Morante Lanilo is from the Philippines, and she has been working as a foreign domestic helper in Singapore since 2016. She's one of the contributors to the book Translating Migration and the anthology Call and Response 2. Migrant, that's what we are. Some journeys triumphant, some have gone and lost it a path. Some even went home cold sealed in a box. Domestic worker, that's what they call us. Digging gold far from homeland. Aim to achieve the pit of greatest dreams with his determined bare hands. Being migrant ain't easy, for when I left home, she was still a baby, and she turns to a lady without me. Countless occasions and celebrations without my family is another collection of memory that is empty. Me for breakfast, chicken rice for lunch. Tears meet my coffee cup for snack and my dinner is homesick attacked. When the sun rest, the world fell asleep. My heart starts to bleed, screaming, yet quiet. The more I heard silence, the more I heard noise. Inner self is yelling, soul is solemnly pleading. And in the far corner, I found myself stoned. Blanket is my comfort shield, and pillows are witness of this river flow. Tears. But what can I do? This is the road I've chosen. Though life here slaps like hurricane, perseverance will lead to a sweet winning 
and I can't wait for this 24 giant stone to break for I am dying to kiss and embrace the place I came from land of promise Zhou Hongxing is from China and has been working as a construction worker and a carpenter in Singapore since 2007. He is always very happy when he sees high-rise buildings rise level by level through his work. Although the COVID wave has yet to recede, he firmly believes tomorrow will be better. Robina Navato is from the Philippines and has been working as a domestic helper in Singapore for 25 years. She volunteers with Home, loves writing poems, and she is one of the writers in Our Homes, Our Stories. She's also a contributor and one of the editors for Call and Response. I am here. I can talk. I can't hear. But it doesn't mean I am not here. I can't see you, but I can feel you. My hands are my eyes. I can still see you through. I cannot think properly. My mind is a twister. Nobody wants to talk to me. When you guide me, I can follow instantly. Your patience is my reward in who I want to be. I used to think I'm useless. I cannot do anything. I'm filled with sadness. Life is hard. I don't see any goodness in me. I want it to end my life, to be free of misery. Then one day, seeing others in the same situation as me made me realize how precious our lives can be. It was not my fault that I was born like this, nor should an accident be blamed in taking away my perfect place. You don't see my strength. All you see is my disability. You don't see my willingness to prove that I have ability. You look at me with disgust, feel annoyed out of the blue, laughing from a distance, making fun of everything I do. Look through me not on what you think is my weakness. I don't need your pity to provide me my happiness. Allow me to work so I can live my life with dignity. Do not judge me based on my incapability. Take away all discrimination. Accept my imperfections. Do not judge me based on what you see, look at me with equality. Be compassionate with me. I am here. You can see me clearly with your naked eyes. I am here. You can hear me loud enough to hear my cries. My disability might be a disturbance to you, but I am here. I need your acceptance too. Mafi Arasan comes from Tamil Nadu, India. He is working as an assistant electrical engineer in the construction sector in Singapore. Migrant workers from many countries are unable to return to their homeland for annual leave. So his poem is dedicated to them. Ulgengum on Titan Rulukum, Utterta Anakum, Tatarta Tamilkum, and Murkumakum. And the pair, Honor Sulu Mariasan, and the Kavidin Talipu, 
என்று பெறும் எங்களின் மோகம் என் அவளுக்கு என் முகம் அறிய மோகம் என் அவளுக்கு என் முகம் அறிய மோகம் இன்றெடுத்த தாய்க்கோ இன்றெடுத்த தாய்க்கு தன் மகன் முகம் அறிய மோகம் பெற்றெடுத்த புதல்வனுக்கோ பெற்றெடுத்த புதல்வனுக்கோ தன் தந்தை முகம் அறிய மோகம் இளம் காளையர்களுக்கோ தன்னுயிர் கண்ணியின் முகம் அறிய மோகம் எங்களின் கைபேசி திரையில் எங்களின் கைபேசி திரையில் உங்களை காணும் தருணம் கசிகிறது வெளியோரும் நான் எறியோம் மித்தம் மித்தம் பணி செய்துவிட்டு மித்தம் மித்தம் பணி செய்துவிட்டு நான்கு புற சூழ்களின் நடுவே இருவழி பயணம் எப்போது கிட்டும் என தினம் தினம் வாடும் பல இதயங்களின் மோகம் என்று தீரும் தமிழர்களையும் தாய் தமிழையும் தமிழர்களையும் தாய் தமிழையும் தன்னிகருக்கு தன்னிகராக வழி நடத்தும் தேசம் எப்போது தீர்க்கும் எங்களின் மோகம் அன்றும் இன்றும் என்றும் நம்புகிறோம் எங்களின் மோகம் விரைவில் தீர்க்கப்படும் என்று படைப்பாளர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் எனது வாழ்த்துக்கள் வாய்ப்பளித்தவருக்கு நன்றி பலர் Muhammad Jakir Hossein is from Bangladesh and has been working here in Singapore since 2007. He started working in a shipyard with an electrical job from 2007 until 2018. In 2019, he moved to construction electrical jobs and while working in the shipyard, he completed his diploma in electrical engineering and graduated in 2016 from PSB Academy. It's a very big achievement for his working life here in Singapore. He feels Singapore is a safe country where rules are very strict and everyone complies with the rules and that the Singapore government also supports foreign workers just like locals. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he tested positive for COVID, but they brought him to a good hotel and gave him good facilities. He hopes to stay a long time to work here in Singapore. Hi everyone. Prabhashi Dharke ni ayam ekta kovita bolbo. Amar kovita naam hoche Prabhash mane ekaki. Bag gere chaka gurar naam e der chaka guri. Jam dure che bag gere chakai ektu nahi nore. Gori katar chate amar jivan ta ke bada. Ektu kaje deri gelei maine pore kata. Sokale jai korbon sthole rate gore phiri. গোসল খানায় সিরিয়াল তাই কথা বলি বাড়ি মায়ের সাথে কথা শেষে গোসল করে আসি ক্যাটারিং এর খাবার নিয়ে সামনে আমি বসি খাবার নিয়ে সাবান মারি গিলা বড় দায় এটাই নাকি সেরা খাবার বন্ধুরা সব কয় চার পোকার আউ রক্ত শুষে শুইলি বিছানাতে জীবন একটা গন্ধ হিন্দু জ্বলছে দিনে রাতে দেহ আমার গলে ক্ষয় মোমের বাতির মতো বিরতিহীন যাত্রা যেন চলছে অবিরত প্রাণান্তকর চেষ্টা তবু প্রতিটি প্রবাসী করে ভাগ্যের চাকা ঘুরার নামে দেহের চাকাই ঘুরে থ্যাংক ইউ মোহাম্মদ জাকির হোসেন ফ্রম সিঙ্গাপুর Richland Canales also known as Che or Cheng is from the Philippines and is proud to be a Filipino indeed She has two brothers and is the only daughter second to the eldest. She is also the only breadwinner in the family. She doesn't really read a lot nor write but is trying to and she loves music, singing, drawing and sometimes plays online games when bored. She prefers to be a happy person despite many problems and a happy pill for everyone. She's limited edition. There's only one her and believes in saying always be yourself because an original is always more valuable than a copy i am but i'm not a silent reader and will always be one i dream to write my own story someday and so i will i love adventures not horrors i like reading romance but i'm no pervert i love my privacy but i'm always available I like music, but I'm trying and dancing. I watch cooking shows, but I'm more like eating. I know how to draw, but not in painting. I'm introvert, but I have lots of friends. I'm silent, but I love talking. I'm health conscious, but my favorite is chocolate. 
I'm chubby, but I'm sexy. I'm cute, but not pretty. I'm overconfident, but to myself only. I love myself, and it's pretty obvious. Christine Tobias Martin was born and raised in the Philippines. She is a single mom of a 10 year old girl and the eldest of five children. She wasn't able to finish college because she had to work to help her parents with household expenses. And due to unavoidable circumstances, she got pregnant at the age of 21. That was when she realized that she had to go overseas to work and provide not just for her kid, but for her family as well. She was 23 when she first came here to Singapore to work as a household helper. She's planning to go back home for good if she can save enough money. And she misses being a mom to her kid, but this is the price for the hopes of a better future. Landas, isang dekada na ang nakalipas ng sinubukan kong makaalpas. Sa tanikala ng kahirapang tila walang lunas. Ako, pananalig at tangitapang lamang ang aking armas. Isang dekada na rin ang nagdaan ng aking baybayin ng daan papuntang paliparan. Dala ang pag-asang makaaahon sa kahirapan kahit hindi batid ang aking kahantungan. Piniling lumayo, pinili kong magsakripisyo. Pinili kong magsilbi at sa ibang lahi magserbisyo. Pinili kong pangarap, pinili kong kalungkutan, wala akong pagsisisihan sa pagpili ko sa magandang kinabukasan. Aking bayan, ako ay babalik. Dala ang natupad na pangarap at aking pananabik. Ako'y maligaya at walang pagsindangan kiti. Ako'y babalik na at yakapin mo akong muli. Nye Feng comes from Xinxian County, Henan Province, China. He is a construction worker. He likes literature and loves poetry. And he also loves mountain climbing and sports. Xia Nanyang, Manfai Xiang Wang, Xia Nanyang, Ji Pan Di Min, HD Waruni Namaka Pereira is from Sri Lanka. She came to Singapore to develop her future and has been here for 15 years. She joined FAST to get elder care training, and her hobby is writing poems. Daru se ni hasa, usula maha mere se di mi gamani bar, tarani akli helu kandulin maha sayur. Daru se ni hasin. Dukakumakatri Vindata 
Mario Tolumban Batu, who you can call Maria, is married and is a mother for two handsome boys. She has been a domestic worker for almost four years in Singapura. During her free time, she likes to write poems and she likes to express her emotions in writing. She enjoys facing challenges and always looks for an opportunity to do better and achieve greatness. Teriakan si budak. Jika raga ini sudah kau perbudak, janganlah pula jiwa ingin kau perbudak. Bila kau tak mampu menemukan seorang budak, Jangan kau paksa aku menjadi budak. Meski engkau menawarkan upah segerobak, aku punya alasan mengapa aku berkata tidak. Meski kau berkata telah menganggapku anak, tapi aku merasa Hanyalah seorang budak. Tolong jangan kau buat aku sesak. Dengan titahmu mencarikan seorang budak. Aku bahkan berteriak-teriak. Tapi... Tak satu pun mengangguk dan berkata, tidak. Bila kau tak mampu menemukan budak, mengapa kau paksa aku menjadi budak? Dan bila aku harus kehilangan kesempatan itu, Karena kau tak mendapatkan budak. Lebih baiklah bagiku beranjak. Misria comes from Tilacap, Central Java, Indonesia. She came to Singapore in September 2016. She loves reading, cooking, gardening, and writing. She's also a mother of two. During her first job in Singapore, she couldn't have her phone an off day. To communicate with family, she wrote letters, and luckily her employer had many books, and she asked permission to read the books after finishing work. After one year, they allowed her to have her phone an off day. She came to Singapore to make a difference and better future for her family. Maybe she's a dreamer. She wants her kids to have a high education, and she hopes her dreams will come true because of working here. Di antara langkah, satu langkah ku awali, ribuan langkah membawaku kemari. Jejak yang ku lewati, jauh sudah ku lalui. Langkah kadang lelah di antara persimpangan ku bertahan. Berhenti memahami arah untuk melanjutkan tujuan. Ku melangkah menepi di saat rasa hati tak pasti. Namun ku sadari ku harus melanjutkan langkah ini. Di antara gelombang asa dan sesaknya rasa di dada, ku kuatkan diri. Ku awali langkah di antara tangis mereka yang masih terus bergema di telinga. Di antara gemuruh hati ku melangkah pergi membawa tangis dan pilu di hati. Jauh sudah kaki melangkah melewati segala kemungkinan berada di antara ketidakpastian Tegak, berdiri, melangkah kembali. 
Di antara harapan Lanjutkan langkah ini Saif Tamal comes from Bangladesh. He has been working at a shipyard in Singapore for 11 years. He started writing in 2004 after being attracted to literature and creativity. He writes short stories, essays, and poems. In 2014, his solo poetry book was published. Amar Kovitar Shironam, Ando Gitar Badok. Jurongis Bastabinaler Futfate Dadie Abeg Bora Conte Gange Guitar Bajato Abjon on the Guitar Bado Potocharira Tar Ganer Shuria Christohe Protidan Shoru Ecti Otoba Duti Mudradito Tar Kotai Agdinami On the Guitar Bado Ker Pashe Dadie Mugdo Hoe Shunechilam Guitar Jadukuri Shur ভালো লাগায় আপলুত হয়ে তার কৌটায় দিয়েছিলাম দুটি মুদ্রা সেদিন আমি প্রথম গিটারের কান্নার সুর শুনেছিলাম তার বুকের জমানো কষ্ট সুরের মূর্ছনায় মিশে গিয়েছিল পাথর চাপা বিবর্ণ ঘাসের মতো ছিল সেই কষ্ট আমি চাইনা ভাষার গান বুঝি না কিন্তু চাইনিজ অন্ধ গিটার বাদকের গিটারের দরদ মিশ্রিত ভালোবাসার সুর ঠিকই বুঝি আর বুঝি পৃথিবীর আলো দেখতে না পারার তার নীরব যন্ত্রণা আমি অন্ধ আমার গান আপনাদের ভালো লাগার জন্য ধন্যবাদ ট্রলির উপরে এক টুকরো কাগজে লেখা তার কথাটি আমার হৃদয়ের গহীনে স্পর্শ করেছিল সেই মর্মে স্পর্শী কথাগুলো আজও ভুলতে পারি না কোভিড উনিশ মহামারী সবার স্বপ্ন ভ্রষ্ট করেছে মৃত্যু হয়েছে বহু মানুষের গিটার বাদক এখন কোথায় আছে কেমন আছে জানি না এই সমাজের বিবেকবান মানুষ কি কখনো সেই গিটার বাদকের কান্নার সুর শুনেছে পৃথিবীর আলো দেখতে না পারার সেই নীরব কান্না আমি শুনেছি জুরং ইষ্টের অন্ধ গিটার বাদকের নীরব কান্নার সুর কারণ আমি কলম ধরতে জানি আমি অবহেলিত মানুষের কথা বলি সমাজের সত্য কথা বলি আমি মিথ্যার বিরুদ্ধে কথা বলি আমি অন্ধ গিটার বাদকের Rodel Baksa Datinguino is a Filipino, 38 years old, and currently working in a shipyard as a document controller for almost 11 years. He loved to write novels and compose poems when he was still in the Philippines. He's also a content creator for YouTube. Creating and reciting poems has become his hobby because he can express his feelings, especially when he's alone. Poetry means a lot to him. Every time he recites his poems, he feels that he is a better version of himself. Tibay at gabay Sa ating buhay dumaranas Tayo ng pagsubok Sumusukat sa ating tatag Lakas at rupok Sa lakbaying kay haba at tila kay salimuot tibayan ang loob upang di tuluyang malugmok kay sarap gunitain panahon ng kamusmusan walang bigat na pasanin maging nga agam-agam inusente sa mundong kanyang ginagalawan yamang may tuturing Di na maaring mabalikan Habang ang panahoy Patungo sa pag-usad Kasabay nga ang paligid na patuloy rin sa pag-unlad Sa pangarap humuhugot ng tibay at tatag Maabot lang ang tagumpay 
na pinaka hahangad. Subalit kung minsan, tadhanay di umaayon. Bibiguin ka ng ilang ulit bago ka makabangon. Sa mga pagsubok na pilit kang hinahamon, tibayan ang pananalig sa kanya ay may tugon. Kay sarap maglakbay kung siya ang kasabay. Mula sa pagsilang hanggang sa wakas nitong buhay. Walang di kakayanin at di malalampas ang tunay anumang unos at pagsubok. Siya ang tanging gabay. Tibay at gabay. Muthusami Chinadurai is a migrant worker from India. He is currently working under a work pass and he is a graduate in engineering and has been in Singapore for two years. ஒவ்வொரு <laughs> உன் பாதத்தில் என் பாதமும் உன் இடையில் என் விரலும் வயாமல் கீதம் வாசிக்க மாங்கல்யம் கழுத்தில் ஏறும் நேரத்தில் மங்கள இசைகள் பார திரு திருமதிகளின் மத்தியில் தித்திப்பாய் முடிந்தது நம் திருமணம் உன் வெக்கத்தின் அழகை காண இன்னொரு ஜென்மம் பிறப்பேனா என இயங்க வைத்த அழகின் முதலரவில் முழு மனதோடு முத்தத்தில் தொடங்கிய நான் முதன் முதலாய் முழு மனதோடு பேசிய முதல் நான் அம்மாவின் அன்பையும் அப்பாவின் அரவணைப்பையும் நிச்சயம் காலம் முழுக்க தருவேன் என் காதல் மனைவியே மூன்று மாதம் கழித்து முகம் சிறந்த நாள் நம் இரண்டு இதயங்களுக்கு இடையில் மூன்றாவதாக ஒரு இதயம் உண்டாகிய நான் ஐந்தாவது மாதத்தில் சுமை தூக்க தடை போட்டேன் ஆறாவது மாதத்தில் மாங்காய் சாப்பிட அனுமதி கொடுத்தேன் ஏழாவது மாதத்தில் என் குழந்தையாய் உன்னை கண்டெடுத்தேன் பத்தாவது மாதத்தில் இரவும் பகலும் உன் அருகில் இருந்தே அந்த நாள் நீ எழுததை பார்த்த நான் எழுதனால் இதை பார்த்த நம் குழந்தையும் எழுதனால் காலம் முழுக்க காதலனாய் நண்பனாய் ஒரு பொற்புள்ள புருஷனாய் என்றும் கலந்திருப்பேன் உன் வாழ் அவ்வளவுதான் இதில் சிறு பிழைகள் உச்சரிப்புகள் தவறாக இருக்கும் உங்களிடம் அனுப்பிக்கிறேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் Now, before we hear more about the results from the judges, let us hear from Mr. David Bacon. David Bacon is a photojournalist author, political activist, and union organizer who has focused on labor issues, particularly those related to immigrant labor. He has written several books and numerous articles on the subject, and today he'll be talking about the situation of migrant communities in California. The talk will be accompanied with a showcase of his photographs. 
it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, thank you for the invitation to um, participate in this important series of events. Um, I'm going to talk today about indigenous migrant communities in California, where I live, um, who are facing the pandemic, um, the climate change, and economic exploitation. And because I'm a photographer, I'm going to show photographs while I'm um, speaking. So we'll begin with this photograph here. This is a photograph of Oaxaca, a state in um, southern Mexico. Um, Oaxaca is normally a very dry state in regions like this. Um, this region is called uh, the Mixteca. Here farmers like Othon Salazar struggle to raise a crop of corn, sometimes still using the same animal and human labor that they've used for generations. Oaxaca is where corn was first domesticated thousands of years ago. But Oaxacan farmer, farmers today are unable to survive economically, primarily because of trade agreements with the United States. And then they have to leave home and become migrants. These are Othon Salazar's hands, uh, made hard from a lifetime of raising corn in these dry and difficult conditions. According to Dr. Jessica Hernandez, a Zapotec scholar and board member of Sustainable Seattle, she says, Indigenous peoples are the first people impacted by climate change. She points to the fate of a small municipality in Oaxaca called San Pablo de Jaltepec, high in the Sierra Mixteca. She says accelerated changes to our climate due to urbanization, fossil fuel industry, and so forth, continues to result in devastating impacts. The heavy rains that have recently taken place in Oaxaca, Mexico, have destroyed many of the harvests indigenous people depend on. For the people of San Pablo Tijaltepec, their milpas or their cornfields were completely destroyed. This leaves 800 Musteco families without the communal harvest that they all depend on. Losing those milpas and the harvest is a blow that falls on people who are already having a hard time surviving. The Mexican government says that family income in the municipality averages about $500 a month, leaving half of its residents in extreme poverty. In 2020, only an eighth of San Pablo Tijaltepec had access to a sewage system and over a tenth had no electricity. The region's Mixteco-speaking people have been leaving and searching for work for decades as a result, joining the 400,000 people who leave Oaxaca for northern Mexico and the U.S. every year. In California's southern San Joaquin Valley, the most productive agricultural region of the world, people from San Pablo de Jaltepec have created a new home, an extension of their Oaxacan community in the small town of Taft. For over two decades, they've worked as farm workers in the surrounding fields. Here, instead of torrential rains, they face another environmental danger, the summer's heat which can rise to over 110 degrees Fahrenheit in July and August. Here is Presidio Silva, an immigrant from San Pablo, Quijaltepec. He is working as an irrigator, cleaning the irrigation ditch next to a field that will be planted with organic vegetables. Because it is organic, the grower can't use herbicide and instead the irrigator removes the weeds. And the temperature at the time that I took this photograph at noon was already over 115 degrees. Beneath the southern San Joaquin Valley are large oil deposits, and for a century, oil derricks, like that behind Silva, have spread across the landscape. They contribute to the valley's poor air quality, and the oil they've pumped for decades is a source of the rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide, a major cause of climate change. Irrigators have set up a shade station next to the field. And here Silva is drinking water from an igloo thermos. The water can't be too cold or it will cause nausea and other problems for someone drinking it. In the shade station are also large containers of water called garafones. Um, many farm workers live in communities where the local water source has been contaminated and therefore they have to buy garafones of water at home and at work. 
indigenous communities uh, and immigrants from San Pablo Tijaltepec set up a committee when they settled in Taft to raise money for projects at home in Mexico, to negotiate with local authorities when there have been problems with the police, and to support community members. Silva was at one time the president of this committee, and today's members are Felipe Gonzalez, Enrique Garcia, Juan Lopez, and Alfredo Cruz. The connections between climate change and increasing summer temperatures have been dramatized by what was called the heat dome that covered the Pacific Northwest this past July, leading to similar temperatures in a region that's accustomed to much lesser heat. Portland and Oregon had a high of 116 degrees. In the nearby Willamette Valley, one farm worker, Sebastian Francisco Perez, died as he continued to work in the heat, moving irrigation pipes in order to pay a debt to a coyote who had smuggled him across the border from Mexico. Scientists and even President Biden attributed the heat dome to climate change and to associated drought. In the southern San Joaquin Valley town of Poplar, extreme heat in the summer is the normal condition in which people live and work. It is one of the poorest communities of the state. Air conditioning in trailer homes or in crowded houses normally consists of old swamp coolers, which hardly lower temperatures. And at work, people bundle up using layers of clothing to insulate against heat and against dust, as we see here with Juan Flores Rangel um, already kind of bundled up against um, the heat. Poplar's families are almost all immigrants or their children who have traveled here from other parts of Mexico or have crossed the Pacific Ocean from the Philippines. Many now are older people, long accustomed to the heat, yet for them the danger is greater as they get older. Some already have health problems springing from poverty and the hard conditions in the fields. The health journalist Liz Singer says, in extreme heat, the body must work extra hard to maintain a healthy temperature. Older adults are at higher risk for heat stroke, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and other serious health issues due to poorer circulation and less effective sweating that comes with aging. Here we see farm workers picking plums in a field near Kingsburg, also in the San Joaquin Valley, in a group of Mexican immigrants. The temperature at the time, at about 10 in the morning, was already over 95 degrees and would reach over 110 in the afternoon. Juan Flores Rana is a picker in the crew, and the crew works in the orchards of a company called Newfield Farms. Much of this farm's fruit is sold in farmer's markets in California cities to consumers who have no idea of the reality that is experienced by the workers who pick their plums. Here is Ruben Figueroa, also a picker in this crew in his 50s. He says, this is hard, exhausting, and challenging work. Of course, I'd like to be able to quit and go home, but I have to keep picking if I want to feed my family. Still, it's honest and honorable work. He says he wears a lot of clothing to protect himself from the sun and heat and from getting cut by the branches of the trees. He adds, there aren't too many people out here in t-shirts. Reginaldo Morelos here, a picker in the crew, empties a bag of fruit that he's picked into a bin. This bag can weigh over 40 pounds when it's full, and he has to carry it up and down the ladder he uses to get to the upper branches of the trees. Again, Juan Flores Rangel here, a picker in the crew, says the thing that would make this job better would be fewer hours when it's hot like this. We can only stop work when the company tells us that's not so good, but we have to work. This rural poverty of the southern San Joaquin Valley stands in stark contrast to the enormous wealth the labor of its people produce. Poplar's Tulare County produced $7.2 billion in fruit nuts and vegetables last year, yet the average income for a county resident is $17,888 a year compared to a U.S. average of $28,000 and 123,000 of Poplar's 453,000 residents, that is, over a third of the people living in this county, live below the poverty line. Poverty forced farm workers to continue working during the pandemic. Tulare County's COVID-19 infection rate was much greater per capita 
than large cities. A year ago, Tulare County had 7,603 confirmed cases and 163 deaths. But in heavily urban Silicon Valley in Santa Clara County, there were 9,411 confirmed cases and 167 deaths. But the population of Silicon Valley's Santa Clara County is 1.6 million people, over three times that of Tulare County. Here we see families arriving in Poplar in the San Joaquin Valley to get a COVID vaccination. And here are people waiting at the entrance to the Larry Itliong Resource Center for those vaccinations to begin. This is just a way of seeing um, who the people are who live in Poplar in the San Joaquin Valley. Here we have Sarabi Pintar and Emily Cruz Padilla waiting for vaccinations to begin. They're very close friends. One of them had already been vaccinated and brought her friend to get the shot. These farm worker communities have fewer resources, but they are creative and resilient. Poplar's Larry Yedleon Resource Center holds vaccination clinics and campaigns for a park where people can find shade in the heat. Legal aid workers in Taft provide counseling about labor and tenant rights in indigenous languages like Misako. A history of farm labor activism in the San Joaquin Valley stretches back to the Great Grape Strike of 1965, led by Larry Leong, and for whom the Poplar Center is named, as well as Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and other heroes of the farm worker movement. Here are farm workers uh, from the Philippines picking table grapes in a field near Poplar in Tulare County. Most workers wear face masks or bandanas as a protection against spreading the coronavirus. Annie Domingo here came from Lawak in Ilocos Norte, province of the Philippines, 45 years ago when she was just 15 years old. Adelina Asuncion here also came from Lawak in Ilocos Norte. She trims the bunch of grapes with her clippers after cutting it from the vine, removing the dry or spoiled fruit. The vines themselves provide some degree of shade for pickers like Adelina Asuncion, although the heat still gets over 100 degrees before they quit. Under the heat protection laws in California, the grower must provide shade, adequate drinking water, and rest periods when the temperature rises. Here, a farm worker family's home in Campo, California, which is a colonia or a small unincorporated community outside of Poplar, Informal farm worker settlements, old colonias have few or no utilities or services provided by nearby cities. Many popular residents live in trailers or mobile homes. Almost none have air conditioning and instead rely on what we call swamp coolers that you can see at the front of the trailer here to reduce the heat. They don't actually do very much. Lupe Aldaco here moved into this house that was falling apart five years ago and then fixed it up so that she, her son, and others could live in it. Rosalinda Guillen, the director of the women-led farm worker organization Community Community in Washington State, condemns the system of corporate agriculture for treating farm workers as disposable. She says, the nation's farm workers should be recognized as a valuable, skilled workforce, able to use their knowledge to innovate sustainable practices. Most are indigenous immigrants, like these folks from San Pablo Tijatepec, and they have the right to maintain cultural traditions and languages and to participate with their multicultural neighbors in building a better America. These photographs are a reality check showing the lives of these communities of the Southern San Joaquin Valley as they deal with the impact of climate change, poverty, and displacement. Reginaldo Lacambacal, is a Filipino immigrant who came to the U.S. from Lawak in the Philippines in his 70s and worked as a farm worker for many years. 20 years ago, he and his family built their house with help from a program called Self-Help. When it gets really hot, he and his wife Gloria go into the open garage and use a fan to try to blow in cool air. Here we see his legs, which show the price that he paid for working in the fields for so many years. Gloria Lacambacal here is wiping her face because of the heat, trying to stay cool in the shade in her garage. 
Leandro Mesa Valdez is an immigrant who came to the U.S. as a boy with his father Santiago from Remedios in Durango in Mexico. His father was a bracero or a contract laborer brought to the United States um, to work under contract, temporary contracts. When he died, Leandro settled here in Poplar in the U.S. People surviving the heat in the park of a farm worker town where the temperature arises to 115 degrees in the mid-afternoon. A group of friends, Maria Elena Leon, Agustin Rivas, and Ignacio, they come to play cards and relax in the shade when the afternoon heat rises. They all sit in a shade structure that was built when activists took over the local development board, which functions as the town government. Although Poplar has no money, activists were determined to do something with the limited resources they had that would make life a little better during the heat. And finally, this is a photograph of Wilfredo Nevarez, a retired farm worker who comes to this park every day to see his friends and relax in the shade. He is dying of cancer, which he believes is due to the pesticide exposure from his years working in the fields. His nephew, Arturo Rodriguez, is an organizer with the Lariat Fion Center. He fought to get the shade built but says that that's not enough. Here are his words. He says, will there be a place where my tia and my and bicho and many more to come can come to enjoy their golden years in life where it's cool in the summer and warm in the winter? We will have a place where my viejitos can chill soon enough. We have every right to expect that and nothing more. The struggle to win better conditions in Poplar has been bitter, he says, but it made him stronger. He says, thank you to Larry County for the plethora of difficult lessons you taught me. You have made me more resilient, more patient, more astute, more loving, more committed, more responsible, and more honorable. Thank you very much for looking at these photographs with me. Thank you, David, for that insightful presentation. Now let's hear a few words from our esteemed judges. All right, folks, you know, all right, judges, you know, we, we've had our chance to look at uh, the entries. We've talked about them. What do you all think? You know, what, what, what struck you about uh, this year's entries? Anyone? Okay, uh, this is my first time here. And I think this competition, although it might seem to be insignificant to the public, but uh, to me, it's a very promising and important one and through this process it gives me a deeper understanding of our migrant workers who share the same land as us on a more cultural and even emotional level not just uh, on the uh, functional level yeah that's taking me away mm. Um, I think for me, like these poems are um, always a great way to learn about the lives of our migrant worker friends. Um, and often it's lives like whether it's in the dorms or how they're feeling being away from their families. I think this year I really have also appreciated the look into how the pandemic has, you know, not just affected them in real terms, but also affected like how they dream and seeing how that kind of merges with um, like epics and, and like mythologies that are local to them. I really enjoyed those. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I really appreciated the, the chance to uh, get a sense of the backgrounds and context, right? The, the sharing that they're, they're giving us. Um, and this year, I think it, it was really wonderful to see even more uh, um, work, work from, from workers from different backgrounds. I, I believe we have Sinhalese poets for the first time, for example, we have Thai poets. Uh, so in a sense, the family of voices is, is growing and it's a, it's a real privilege for us uh, to be able to hear from them. And I think it's, you know, it's wonderful to see this conversation continuing despite the difficulties of the pandemic. And I think all the more our responsibility uh, is to listen and listen closely. Yeah, this is you know, grateful for the voices we have. I think I think we should we would also invite more people to read these poems closely to see what they can unpack um, into like what we think about as the so-called migrant worker experience. I think it's much more expensive than we we even uh, think about usually. Yeah, 
Yeah, correct. I, I, I'm also looking forward to what we can do after this because this to me is only the first half of the, the entire event. But what we can do more is to how to share the, this work, how to get more people to, to understand this. I think one, one thing that's very interesting is you know the work of translation that needs to be done for this to even come across to us. And this is something we, we definitely need to uh, improve our capacity for, right? And so we, we can all learn to be better at this uh, and, and then to help each other and of course help more of these voices come forward. And of, and of course, you know, many of these uh, myths and stories and cultural references are not new to us. They're part of our fabric as well. You know, you talk about be it, uh, Chinese myth or Indian mythology or all these uh, cultural references. Uh, they're, they're part of our grounding and our roots as well, right? So this is a chance to really uh, explore once again, uh, you know, the broader Asian uh, tapestry that we really are part of. I think I think you brought up a very important point. Talking about the translation, I think trans the process of translation should be a process of intercultural exchange. Yes. But for now, I think the translation is just serving as a more functional role. But I hope that in the future, maybe we can also bring the translation onto the table and see what we can do about it. And so I'm already looking forward to uh, the next uh, set of poems to come next year. And I, I, you know, may this venture grow from strength to strength. But we also have to step forward and to sit down with uh, our fellow writers and do what we can to help. And uh, can I just say it's been a real pleasure working with you, also Nabila, Xiaoyi, and of course Shivaji and, and the whole team. Thanks for continuing this work uh, and this difficult time. Thank you. And thank you, of course, to all the poets who send in their work um, for this competition. You're all, you know, you're all very, very important. Please keep writing uh, and take care. Thank you to our esteemed panel of judges for deliberating the finals. To our viewers, are you ready to find out who the winners are? The judges have deliberated and we are happy to announce that they have made their decisions. Once again, the prizes for the contest are 1,000 Singapore dollars for first place, $500 for second place, and $300 for third place. There are also consolation prizes, trophies, and certificates. There are two honorable mentions for 2021. Congratulations to Niefeng and Oliveri M. Milado. Now, here are your top three winners for 2021. The third prize winner is Durga Balad. Second prize goes to Mohammad Jakir Hussein. And the first prize of the Singapore Migrant Worker Poetry Competition 2021 is Lim E. Wei. Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you everyone for staying with us till the end of this event. We would like to encourage our fellow migrant workers to keep writing, creating art, telling stories, and be the artist that you are. Please also encourage your friends and spread the love for the arts. Continue supporting us by following us on Facebook and Instagram, and get involved with the conversation to raise awareness on the lives of migrant workers. Take care and stay safe. Thank you very much, everyone, and see you next year.